Malicious activity is a little bit different than malicious code. So malicious code is where somebody has written something, malware, and it gets on your system and causes disruption on your system. Malicious activity is a little bit more direct. In other words, it's, well, humans. Humans directly causing activity in an attempt to steal or damage something at the organization. So whether it's to your network, whether it's to confidential data, it's people that are doing the attack. And there are several different kinds of attacks. Now, this isn't a comprehensive list, but this will get you kind of started on it. One of the, well, I shouldn't say most common, but one of the common areas is social engineering. And this is a non-technical means. This is a, 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 of gaining access to something. And I, I want to give you an example of this. This is where someone can manage to coax or trick somebody into doing something that gives them information that they can use, like credentials. Um, and as an example for this, uh, um, I, I, I actually saw this. <laughs> there was a guy, he's a certified ethical hacker, and he was being paid by a company to um, execute this attack. So this was an ethical attack. Um, and what he had done is this, is he had spoofed the company's internal uh, phone number. And he had used that internal phone number to make a phone call to Help Desk. And Help Desk sees that it's an internal telephone number and answers the phone, you know, thank you for calling Help Desk. And he said, hey, look, I've got a problem with this website I'm trying to get to for a big meeting on Monday. And I can't get to this website. I wonder if maybe you could try it and take a look at it and see if you can get to it. And the guy, and the guy on Help Desk said, sure, I'll take a look. And so he opened up the browser. He got the URL and went to the website. And he says, you know what? Uh, I can get to the website. Well, the, the certified ethical hacker responded, you know what? It just started working for me as well. You know, you guys are magical. I don't know how you did it. You know, I don't know much about computers, but this is fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a nice day. Well, the website that he tricked the help desk into going to was a website that allowed the certified ethical hacker to take full control over his entire desktop. This means his session. So if that help desk person had elevated privileges, he also now had those elevated privileges. And he did this just by, well, wordplay, just by talking to somebody, being really nice and managing to get them to do something that they really shouldn't be doing. Now, the company had hired him specifically to test out their help desk and if their help desk was weak in their responses. And this is a great example of it. So social engineering is a very difficult kind of attack to stop um, because it requires a lot of user training on how to respond. You know, who are you? What are your credentials? Do we have some way of verifying who this person is before we start taking actions? And so it's a challenging thing dealing with social engineering. Now, there's a couple of other things that are human-based activities, such as farming, and that's an attempt to get credentials or other personally identifiable um, information. Now, this is very similar to another type of attack that we're going to talk about called phishing. And the idea here with farming is that um, I'm going to get you to be redirected to a website that you think is trusted, that you're going to provide additional information with. Now, one of the ways that this uh, can be done is with direct human interactivity, kind of like social engineering. And it's referred to as phishing. And this is the voice part to this. This is where you might receive an email from a source that seems to be trusted and it has a phone number for you to call. Well, when you call that number, it could be a voice recording that is asking you for specific information, but sometimes it's an actual person that will then do a social engineering attack to gain personal information from you. Now, this has been a common attack in recent 18 months, so much so that um, a lot of federal investigations have been occurring around this, and it's hard to trace. I mean, it's a, it's a hard attack to trace, you know, other than the uh, phone number, which could be a cell phone, you know, a throwaway cell phone. Um, and very experienced social engineers have managed to gain uh, a lot of information from people and then removed money from their accounts. Now, Keylogger, you've probably heard about this. This is a piece of software or hardware, generally hardware, 
that is going to collect the keystrokes that a, a user makes uh, on their PC. The idea is, is that I'm going to collect some kind of, uh, of information that will be useful. I'm really looking for your credentials, if I can get those, and you know the password that you typed in. Now, this is one of those tricky kind of activities where a lot of times it's an insider that's doing this attack, um, and it may not be somebody that you expect. In other words, it can be walked in with the cleaning crew. It's easy to get a job with the cleaning crew and then place this as a device between the laptop and the keyboard or the computer and the keyboard um, to track it. Along with key loggers, the same, a very similar attack can be done with wireless sniffers, sniffers that are on USB keys that can be plugged in as well. Now, one of the, and I deal with these all the time being uh, uh, a web guy, <laughs> um, denial of service attacks. And this is where someone intentionally targets um, predominantly a web server in order to shut it down. And what they'll do is they'll use a system to um, target your website and generate a lot of traffic, a lot of web requests. So many web requests that it your web server can't respond to anybody else or it gets slower and slower over time. Now, a denial of service attack is very common, but it's it's gotten even more complex today. A distributed denial of service or DDoS is where multiple systems are used to perform that denial of service attack. And the reason is this, web servers are pretty good at responding pretty fast. Also, if you have something like a web application firewall, it may detect that it's getting a denial of service attack from a particular IP address and it turns it off. Well, if multiple systems are being used, hundreds of systems are being used, it's hard to detect, track, and turn off everything. And so this can shut down the ability of your website. Now there's a lot of terms that you'll hear about denial of services, distributed denial of service attacks, um, referred to as botnet, bots, or zombie attacks. Matter of fact, I think I use the term zombie attack. So somebody is taking over multiple systems. Now, one of the ways that they take over the multiple systems is by getting malware on those systems and then targeting them. And these don't have to be giant computer systems that are hidden away in a data center. They could be your laptop that they've targeted that will now start firing out communications to shut somebody down. Now, spoofing, and I've used this term a lot of times, this is an attack that um, actually uh, pretends that it's somebody or something else. So we talked about Mac spoofing earlier um, in, a, in a previous course, and the idea was is that I can spoof your Mac address. In other words, I can make my Mac address look like yours. So that's something that becomes trusted so that I could get on your Wi-Fi. Well, spoofing can be done with a lot of things. Um, I might spoof your email address. And if I can read your address book, I have a bunch of people that are going to trust that the email I send to them came from you and I can put in some sort of payload. So spoofing can be done in a lot of different ways. There is the standard phishing attack, and that's an attempt to get your personally identifiable information as uh, very similar to farming. Um, it could be something that's sent out as a as blanket coverage. And what I mean by that is a generic email that gets sent to anybody I can find addresses for. And it says, you know, click here to go to this website, and it'll give me some capability to either take over your system or collect data about you. The ones that are even more challenging than these phishing attacks, because you know users are going to click on this, is spear phishing. And I had mentioned this one as an example when we started this course. This happened to me where it was directed to me. It even looked more trusted because it had my name in it and some additional information and looked like it came from the bank. So I had every reason to think that this was a trusted email and to click on the link. Now, of course, I didn't, but this is difficult to teach people because it's coming from a trusted source.